Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hi, hi, Susie. Um, what we're going to do is we were, we were Roger was going to start. We had a little bit of a glitch here um, where Roger was knocked off. So since you are already scheduled for this time frame, we're just going to go ahead and start with you, and then we're going to get Roger taken care of and get him back in. Perfect. Perfect. I think I'm back in now. Oh, Roger, you're back in. So we have you. <laughs> Yay, we're all together. <laughs> but go ahead, Susie. Have at it. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and let Susie go ahead and go, and then we'll go back with the original um, layout where Susie was going to be first. So sorry for the back and forth, everyone. I know it's a little bit confusing, but my, I had some some situations with some of the presenters, but we're we're all good now. So I'm going to go ahead and get Susie started, and we're going to pick up from where we left off and make this work again. Okay, Susie, go ahead. All right. I, yes, thank you for your patience. Um, commuting is fun. That's all I got to say. <laughs> but we're here, and I'm excited, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to talk to you about the system. Um, I could talk all day, but I won't. I promise. I will keep our time as brief as we can, um, but I do want to give you a good sense of the system overall. And I know we have people here who've never seen the program and, and others who are, are probably into it. So I, I'm hoping that you pick up something, a little nugget for the day. I always ask my uh, my team, hey, find one thing that you're, you've learned and, and take that with you. Always look for that little piece of, of nuggets to go with. So I, I'm excited to start you off with um, the day today. So we're gonna be talking about um, the all-in-one system. And uh, I am a two-time firm user of Perfect Law, and I feel like that's a support group, and it is, <laughs> because we're all in a support group when it comes to law firm management. Um, so this is my second firm that I've been at with Perfect Law, and I have been in other, so many other um, software management systems, and this is by far the most efficient program I have worked with, because it is all-in-one, and that is the key to a lot of the efficiencies that um, firms have to, are always looking at, how can we do this better? How can we do this faster? How can we collect things? And um, one of the things that helped us in regards to moving over to perfect law was this. Here is the situation I was presented with. Susie, we, this calendar syncing, it's a mess. The system that we have, my calendar is too full. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. You know, I, I need to look at my time entries, but I always have to call accounting to have them release things, and and then I have to create these things on my own. What 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 can we do to fix this? And as administrators or law firm leaders, that's always what people come to you for, right? They come to you with the problem. They expect you to have the solutions. So that was what was presented to me when we were looking for software. And when we came across um, Perfect Law, it answered all of our questions and solved the majority of our problems. And if it didn't, they made it work. <laughs> and that's one thing I love about the software is it, it is so customizable to whatever your needs are. So the advantage for us to having this all-in-one system it was the solution to a lot of our problems. And I'm going to highlight those things as we go through some of the features of the system and how we use it from an insurance defense perspective. And I'm hoping that you start to pick up on a lot of those things. But we were using a calendar and document assembly. That's something we were already used to. And we, when we moved into this all-in-one system. It now connected everything we did to a time entry. We all know how hard it is for um, us to push attorneys to capture their time or enter their own time. And how, how can we make that easier? And this system, by having it all connected, front office, back office, they talk to each other all day long, it solved those situations. So everything I show you today, I'm going to do and connect it back to that time entry because that's the vantage point that a lot of our users, um, attorneys and staff are looking for was the time entry piece. Excuse me while I drink water. I literally ran from the train station. <laughs> all right. So here's what happened for us with the all-in-one user system. We started with our calendar. Here's the problem. A lot, and I'm from Chicago, so Cook County, we would have um, 
what I lovingly refer to as cattle calls. Your, your attorneys have a case management call, a status call setting, and could have 20 cases up at the same time. And when you put them on the calendar, your attorney looks at that calendar, your partner, and he has 25 appointments all at 9 o'clock. And he doesn't go to any of them. He sent his first-year associate, who's perfectly capable of handling that status call. And he instead went to do the expert deposition at 9 o'clock. But when he was out of the office and looked at his calendar, his outlook, yes, everything synced perfectly, but he couldn't find where he was supposed to be because he had 25 other appointments in front of it. So that was the first problem that we were having to solve. And what um, Perfect Law did when we were able to switch over to it is they have the option of the noticed attorney field, which is fantastic. And when we were able to do that, we were able to choose what kind of event would sync to the attorney's calendars. They would have all of the events on their cases on their Perfect Law calendar so they could see what was going on and who was attending. But if they weren't going to it, it wasn't going to sync to their Outlook calendar. So they only had to know where they had to be when they were out of the office. And that was key for us. There were also several appointments where um, maybe they were a do not attend or somebody else was going to attend for us. Um, so we were able to create um, place filler attorneys to put in there for that, uh, for that event or that appointment. Um, and you would think that that was the best thing since sliced bread, and frankly, quite was. <laughs> it was um, the first thing that helped us in regards to the appointments. The other th part of the calendar that was um, helpful for us, and you guys have to stick around for Chris McVick, Chris Bicker's session. She's a genius, and she will tell you all about these uh, calendar intricacies. I'm doing things at a high level. Um, but the history of an appointment. You can click on your history of an appointment. If you cancel it, reschedule it, do any of those things, and it'll print out the entire history of what happened. And I can tell you, again, from an insurance defense side, we have printed out the history of that appointment and walked into a judge's chambers, and when they said, why hasn't the plaintiff deposition been taken yet, we could see the history of how many times that appointment was rescheduled, and it'd say plaintiff had a, had a uh, flat tire, or their dog was sick, or it was a no-show, and having that entire history, we've entered in as exhibits into uh, some of our, our, our court proceedings, and so having that feature was fantastic, um, and you can see on the screen right now that notice attorney field that's highlighted. When the... Um, when the matter is created, you're able to put in your, your timekeepers, your paralegal, whoever it is that works on that file and that noticed attorney field. And they will always be notified on their perfect law calendar when there is an event on one of their matters. But unless they are actually the attorney attending, which is on the other screen, it won't sync to their Outlook calendar, thus keeping everything clean. But as you also saw, sorry, Thank you. Uh, as you can also see, I highlighted this create an event complete. Here's the real fun thing. They could be out of the office on their phone or they could be in the office and come back and, and you know, you do your, your summary letters to your clients about what just happened. From the perfect well calendar, from that exact appointment, when you click complete, it automatically creates your time entry. So, they can do that time entry in minutes as opposed to handwriting it. How many of you guys still handwrite? Have their attorneys who handwrite their time. Um, this eliminated that whole step. <laughs> yeah, I see my hand. Um, eliminated that whole step because it put in the name of the case. It put in the activity code from when the event was completed. Um, the description is already in there. The time frame is already in there. If they needed to adjust the time frame, um, you know, whatever we allowed it, allotted, you know, half an hour down to a point three, they could fix the description, click complete, time entry, done. Brilliant, right? Brilliant. There are, I, I always teach nine different ways in our system to enter time, and, and as much as it can be automated, that's what we do. So when we have this feature turned on, create on event complete, it was creating their time entry. That's an all-in-one system. Your front office is helping you with your back office, puts it together. All right, the next thing that um, helps in going to the all-in-one system was the document assembly. 
one of my biggest peeves is copy document. <laughs> Don't say that to me. <laughs> Why? Adjusters change all the time. It happens in the insurance defense world. Cases get reassigned back and forth. Um, adjusters move from one insurance company to another, just like attorneys move from one law firm to another. When you copy that old document, you're copying old information. Or what if you typed in the claim number wrong on that one letter? It's wrong from that point forward. So the copy document always made me cringe. So we wanted to make sure the document assembly was up and running. And that meant you could create your document with the click of a button. And this system does that perfectly. You can create as many forms as you need to. And um, you were able to find those places of, well, where do we store this? For instance, your, your case number. Well, where are we going to put our case number? Because that's going to be in a lot of our merged documents. Well, there are, there are fields within the system where you can plug those in and then create the code and it attaches to your, your merged document. There are PDF forms now with the courts, which are, are great, but they, they're asking you to fill those out. The system does merge with those PDF forms. So you can download that appearance that the court requires you to have, put in your merge fields, and all of that comes across. Fantastic. So it, it, it just made our life easier. And let me tell you, and again, right, as leaders in your firm, people come to you with problems, complaints, um, suggestions. I, I would get complaints from staff. It's too many clicks. Right? No lie, no lie. If I do that, it's four clicks. If I do that, it's only two. I want the two clicks. It saves me time. So the document assembly, one click, their document's created. It was the best thing again since sliced bread. But as you can see, it was highlighted on here as well. Um, create a new document. Again, there's that prompt. If they're creating that, that document, uh, the time entry will pop up. Do you want to keep track your time? Start your time entry. Start your timer. Do your little merge document. Capture your time. All in one swoop. This was, you know, you're used to a lot of our new attorneys coming up, they don't use their secretaries as much or their legal assistants, which is perfectly fine. So they will merge their own documents. And when they do, um, they're able to create their time entry immediately. So this is, again, helpful for that independent attorney who is doing a lot of their own work and not using their staff. Um, but what's so cool, and again, Chris is going to get into this, when there are, uh, you know, we had these status call hearings, maybe it was a trial call setting we could attach a merge form to that event. And when they would complete that event, that merge form popped up for them right away. So they didn't even have to go look for it. I'm telling you, it makes their life so easy <laughs> that it, it's fantastic. They, they, they don't have to ask me for nothing because I just hand it to them on a silver platter. And um, that's why, again, I love, I love this system. And I'm sorry, I'm passionate, but I'm hoping that excites you this morning too. Uh, so the document assembly piece of it, so, um, amenable. You can do it from so many areas. You can do it from um, the contact screen. You can do it from the document screen. You can do it from the calendar screen. You can do it from anywhere in the system, and that's what makes it great for the user because everyone can still have their preferences. They can prefer to look at it from this angle, but it still works the same way. Um, so that's, again, this all-in-one system is, is why we moved over to Perfect Law was to help us to have that front office and that back office talking to each other at the same time. And the document assembly and calendar were our, our main features that we were looking at. All right, so now I wanna get into some of the more basic features of the system that are available to everyone. And I have a, a, a tab view on the side, as you can see it going down. There are different views where some will have it across the top. Um, but you'll see there's a myriad of different options that come with creating your file and organizing your file within Perfect Law. One of my biggest pet peeves, okay, I've already said the other one this morning. <laughs> Another one of my biggest pet peeves is not using the system that you have. I've logged in before and said, hey, what's that tab do? They go, oh, we don't use it. What? <laughs> if you have a system, use it. And Perfect Law is 
able to do those things that you need it to do. Don't try to make, you know, your your old system work into the, the new one. Get the new one to do what you want it to do. So there are so many features already built into the system that we've used to solve even more problems from an insurance defense side. And I, I just want to kind of give you some, some tricks that we've figured out, and maybe it will inspire you if you already have perfect law, or it will um, give you some ideas if you're thinking about switching. So leveraging what you already have. One of my favorite tabs in the system is the Matter Notes tab. We use this for every for everything. I love it. Um, I like to say that Matter Notes is like your memo to file. Be honest. How many still have attorneys who dictate memo to file? Huh? Huh? There are some here, <laughs> okay? They dictate your memos to file, you type it up, you save it. This is what I, I like as the matter notes. I always try to encourage them, hey, if there's that little note that you're, or memo you're trying to make to the file, this is where you want it. This is where it should be. And so I, I've encouraged a lot of our partners or shareholders to use the tab for in, in replace of dictating these memos to file. Why? Because they can create a time feature from it. Time entry, I mean, come on. Um, that's on, on the next one. But we also use it from a staff point of view. We like to use our matter notes because of um, um, debt scheduling. Paralegals, here's the problem. How long am I going to keep track of all the debt scheduling without muddying up the calendar? So we decided to use our matter notes. And what was really cool about our matter notes is you can even create a template with inside of it. So if you are training a new paralegal or someone's new to the firm, and there are certain steps that keep getting forgotten, even by your team that's been there for three or four or five years, you can create this template with that matter note. Make sure the debt notice has been sent. Make sure you've asked for the, the, the fee agreement. Make sure the check has been sent. You know, make that template so it's kind of their checklist to go down before they complete that task, that the deposition's been scheduled, to go through those things. And it's been so helpful because matter notes are viewable to everybody, right? So we'll, we have had the um, paralegals start these matter notes of depositions of and start to create the notes. So now when it is time, we get that CMC order back from the court that says, you need to have all your F1s scheduled by this time, you need to have all your F2s scheduled by this time. Our paralegals immediately go into their matter notes and create a matter note for each of those depositions they need to schedule, okay? Um, I think on the next screen I have an example of it too. Um, so they will do a deposition of Dr. Smith, a deposition of, of um, the nurse, a deposition of, yeah, there's the screen, um, a deposition of somebody else, and, and they'll start to create these matter notes. Now the attorney knows that the paralegal is watching out for it or their assistant, whoever it is that does their scheduling for them, and they're able to keep track of how many depositions they're scheduling. They will put their notes underneath. Um, you know, why, it, if the attorney's up for the CMC tomorrow with the judge and the judge says, what's the status of all your F1s? They don't have to call the paralegal anymore. They don't have to call their assistant anymore and be like, hey, what's going on? They go straight to the matter notes and they go, okay, see that they um, increase all of them. Looks like two of them are set, the other three are not. And when they click into that deposition of Dr. Smith, they'll see, oh, still waiting on dates from doctor. So it creates that efficiency, again, where there's not a lot of back and forth, because we all know the last two years we've done nothing but practice law by email, right? And that's exhausting. So this creates that communication piece internally without creating a lot of clutter in between. There's an instant message. And Roger's going to get into this in a little bit, but what this also helps do is now create a report that I can run at any point in time of matter notes on a certain um, timekeeper. And I can say, wow, Tina, you have 85 depositions in the hopper right now that you are scheduling. But Lindsay only has 22. Let's look at that workload a little bit. Let's see what else we can do to you know, make that a bit more manageable. So having that tool is, is great for me as a manage, from a management perspective to help look at that workload. It's also great for your paralegals or, or assistants who are doing your scheduling to pull up that report. You know, maybe the rule is not, not rule, but um, 
the organizations every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they pull up their report, see every deposition that's outstanding, which ones they're still waiting on and following up on. So they have that follow-up task right there for them. At a minute's notice, they can tell me how many depositions they're, sched they're scheduling. At a minute notice, they know exactly which ones they need to follow up on. And it's not cluttering up your calendar. Um, I have another suggestion here. You can use it for IMEs. If IMEs are, are part of your um, your practice, you can create a matter note for that. But when you create these matter notes, same thing. There is that opportunity for um, the time feature to pop up and ask if you want to start um, a timer and create a time entry from those matter notes. So again, saving that step, matter note, time entry, front and back office. It's fantastic. It works great. Um, so that's that's one of the tabs that's within the system that you can use. And hopefully a little idea that can get you about another way to use it. Um, I'll move quickly. I know that we started a little, a little bit late and we want to leave some time for Roger too. Um, another way that we use the system uh, is already in there. I think that's the batch, but um, the attorney diary. I, I refer to this as the little black book, and I think Debbie from Perfect Law is the one that actually came up with that, so I'll give her credit. But the little black book, the, the attorney diary at the top. <laughs> Welcome. Debbie's my hero. <laughs> uh, the attorney diary, their little black book. What are those calls that we would get all the time? Uh, mostly to accounting. Uh, hey, can you tell me what my AR is? Sure, and your billers, whoever have to stop, create this report, send it to them. We created that as a search and put it as a tab on their attorney diary. Hey, can you print me out a list of what my open files are? Sure, stop what they're doing, do that, email it to them. Instead, we just created it as a tab on their attorney diary. So again, it's all about self-sufficiency. I always remind them, you went through law school, you can, you can do this on your own, you don't have to call someone to feed you the information, but it does give the attorneys the, the empowerment, the transparency that they need to keep working as well. Because you know, they'll call and ask the back office for, for something, have to wait on it, and, and then proceed with other activities. Again, this is instant access. It's that all-in-one system that helps you do that. So we use that attorney diary for um, those searches that our attorneys like to ask for frequently so that they don't have to. <laughs> and they can have it all right there at their, at their fingertips, right there in the front office. And back office billers are happy because they're not being interrupted. Um, the last option before I get into the batch emails is there are custom tabs that you can also always have Perfect Law create for you. Um, insurance, defense, you know, your medical records are your Bible. And if there's one thing you have to make sure you have in order are those records keeping track of that production log. Um, so from a civil defense side, we created a, a custom tab for tracking that production log. Um, if subpoenas were sent out for medical records, we, we would add them into this production log that something was sent out and the date that it was sent out. Um, and here at this firm as well, doing work comp, you know, we can send 50 subpoenas for medical records out in a day. And then, what do you do to follow up on them, right? If, if you have someone that's constantly having to do the subpoenas and follow up on them, it can get very overwhelming. So in the same matter that we use, or manner that we use that matter notes tab, we use this custom tab for records to keep track of everything that's been sent out. And then we could run that report and Roger will be able to show you how to do all those kind of searches to see what has been sent out without a date received. And then we could see again that as on Tuesdays when they followed up on their subpoenas, they knew which hundred facilities they had to call because they didn't have those received records yet. Again, it gives the front office, your attorneys, that ability to go into that tab and, and they're getting ready for a deposition in two weeks and be like, hey, do we have all the records? Again, they don't have to have that communication because it's viewable right there to them. They know exactly what records have been received, what have not. And they can look in the notes to see why those records haven't been received. Maybe they're waiting on it, the paralegals waiting on a HIPAA or something, and they put that in the notes. They've created that communication tool back and forth. Um, we this is a work comp defense firm, and we have a work comp tab where we store everything: your TGD, your PPD, your settlement, your your nature of injury, your body part, and that's custom to our our practice. 
So that custom tab was created so that we had places for that information and then would be able to, of course, correlate to our, our document assembly. The last thing I would like to go over with you about the front office that is super exciting for me um, is the concept of these automated batch emails. This tool, is again, is great for those, those reports that your attorneys ask for on a regular basis. And um, one of the, the one of the the things that we would do on a normal basis was the attorney diary. It would go out every Wednesday. Attorneys would look at it, assign themselves to events, give it back to docket, and then they would go in and you know reassign the attorneys. So there were like five steps to this process, right? And this was all paper too, by the way. And I was like, wait, so we print the same report every Wednesday, and then it's printed and walked around and delivered. But if it's the same report, why aren't we making it available to our, our viewers and or our users? And so I asked Perfect Law, I'm like, hey, this, this happens on, you know, on a frequency, same frequency every every Wednesday this this report is run. They said, huh, we can we can automate that. Get out of town. Again, if it's not a manual process, let's do it. Right? Take those manual processes off the table as much as you can. So we created an automated email for a diary, the, the report for what your calendar was, to be emailed to that individual, their specific calendar, every Wednesday, no thought behind it, done. And it took out that whole responsibility off of our, our docket person who said it was so time consuming to do. It's gone, it's off her plate, everybody has the information they need, and it's in their inbox. So that was one way we used it. Um, the way we are using it here is their budgets. So if you have your, your hour budgets that you um, set up for your productivity budgets that you set up for your attorneys, um, we have an automated report goes out every Tuesday that shows you, hey, are you in a surplus or are you in a deficit for where you should be for your productivity this year? And it's sent out every Tuesday morning. So they know they have to post their time every Monday night by five o'clock. And guess what? I, I've been here at this firm for three months. This is the first month that we've had this automated um, email go out about their um, productivity hours. They've never posted on, on a consistent time. They post it consistently. And this is the first month that we did it. And, and staff, billers, attorneys, we had zero delay when it was time to print whips because all the time was posted. And guess what? We captured more hours than we have before because they knew they were being held accountable for how many hours are in the system. So yeah. use it to your advantage. <laughs> These things are fantastic. Any of those reports that you see go out on a daily basis, maybe your shareholders want to see um, a collection report every Monday morning. Again, that's something that you could automate and have done and set out. Take that manual process out of this of your step and your uh, user step and give them their time back. So that again is another fantastic feature I love about Perfect Law. And I think that's a great that's my stopping point. I know I talked fast, so if there's questions or if we need to take a break, and then Roger's going to pick it up from here. Um, Anthony, I'll turn it back over to you, and you can tell us what's next. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Susie. I know uh, you had a little bit of trouble getting in the office, but we definitely appreciate it. You gave us a whole lot to kind of chew on here. And what I want to do is without much delay, because we were trying to get Roger started earlier, we're going to go ahead and have Roger Howerton. He's uh, at Thornton Beachland Reynolds and Guerrero in San Antonio, Texas. Um, going to get him go ahead and, and kind of step in and pick up from the reporting aspect of things. And Talk to us about the things that he feel has been great for his firm. So, Roger, are you there? I'm here. Can everybody hear me? All right. Thanks, Susie. I appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Roger Howerton, and I am with Thornton Beacon. What's that? I am with Thornton Beacon Reynolds and Guerra. Uh, our primary office is in San Antonio, Texas, but we do service, service all of South Texas, uh, Austin, Houston, and the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, I've been with the firm for about 20 years now, and Perfect Law is our third data conversion uh, software that we have implemented. 
and by far the easiest uh, one we've gone to. Uh, one of the, the best items I have found for Perfect Law is the reporting module from the front office. Uh, during our whole data conversion process, I had to do an RFI uh, for an insurance carrier that required just some historical data. Um, in our previous system that we were still live with, I had to run a few reports, you know, export into Excel, run some calculations to get the correct data. I thought I'd give Perfect Law a try, run some reports, and within a few clicks, I had all the data I needed, um, and I was blown away by it. And we were still in a, a test database at that time, but it gave me the numbers that matched our old system with like Susie said, just a few clicks of the mouse, and boom, I was there. So right off the bat, uh, the reporting has been a huge thing for me and for the firm. Um, one major item for me is security. And by, by having a report library or a report builder in the front office, helps a great deal by not having to give uh, staff or associates access to the back office or the financial part of perfect law. Yes, the two integrate and talk to each other constantly, but you're able to run productivity reports, um, matter ledger reports, to see your AR, your write-offs, uh, all the, the accounting detail from the front office, and again, without having to give access to the back office uh, to view the data. Um, what, uh, another huge part of it, besides like the matter ledger reporting part, is again, the attorney of productivity. Uh, we're able to see what attorneys are billing for, what are they spending uh, the most time doing, you can drill down via client matter activity. You can get down to the task code to see exactly uh, what they're spending their time on. You know, some some of that work could be paralegal work, and that attorney should be passing that all to a paralegal. You know, based on the on the task that they're billing, um, and increase the attorney's productivity just by looking at these reports. <clears throat> So again, reports are a huge thing for us um, in our firm. I can't see what slide you're on, Anthony. Oh, there, there you are, okay. All right, so uh, within AIM, you do have the, uh, the matter ledger or the, mat the matter report builder, which again, out of the box reports that you can click on to get specific, specific information on cases, uh, calendars, case management, uh, matter notes, like Susie said, are huge. Um, you can do full, full text search searches for documents. Um, if someone deleted a document by accident and they claim they don't know what happened, you can find out who deleted it and even get that audit history on that as well. Um, <clears throat> also within the search, the report writer, you can create your own queries and save them um, for, for future uses. So yeah, you can run the same report every month and your parameters are already set. And just with a couple of clicks, it spits out a report. Uh, you can email it, print it, which I'm against printing, or convert it to an Excel, manipulate the data as needed, uh, and do what you need to do with that report. All, all of our attorneys and associates um, obviously have, have goals. Uh, it must meet those goals every month, and that's what makes that's what makes the law firm profitable, pretty much. Um, with that is the productivity tool that is built into Perfect Law. 
again, uh, you can do this by giving permissions to certain attorneys of what they can view or what other attorneys' data can be viewed. Um, obviously, partners will have access to all the associates' productivity. Associate may not have access to a partner's productivity. So, you know, it's very customizable by each user or by creating groups of users and giving them access. Um, again, the, the chart that is in front of you um, is customizable by client, matter, task, or activity code. You can also narrow down the search to uh, by day, month, or even the whole year, and the pie chart will adjust you know, based on what you're choosing, whether it's client matter activity task code, which again is really, really helpful when um, you want to know what your attorneys are spending their time on. One of the other huge reports that we use um, in perfect law is the uh, case detail report, which I don't think I have a copy of it on the slideshow. Um, but the case detail report will give you everything that has happened with that matter. It, it is the date you opened it, um, all of the calendar events, what has been completed, what's not completed, all of the notes, which, like Susie said, notes are a huge thing, um, all the notes that have been created um, to include conflict check, which everybody knows a conflict check is, is a huge part of when you get an assignment, um, the conflict check is actual part of the perfect law reporting process. Um, there's a few ways to access it in, in perfect law. Um, have a saved record to your matter. You make your note, boom. When you run your case detail report, um, it shows in there uh, that the conflict check report was ran and completed and it was approved. <clears throat> Um, since COVID, our, our firm obviously has been closed for a good portion of the time, and a good good number of our employees still work remote. Um, and one good thing is the the paralegals and the assistants are able to run reports of the attorneys' uh, calendars for the week, for the day, for the whole month, if they choose, and email them over to the attorneys. Um, back when we were physically open, the attorney wanted that in paper. Um, but with perfect law, again, a couple quick clicks, uh, you get your, your calendar, you know, it's over to the attorney, you're good to go. No other work is required. Uh, there is a, a ton I could talk about with the reports. Uh, does anybody have any questions so far? We like to use those reports too, Roger, those um, productivity reports for review time. But for review time, exactly, exactly. And that we also run those for review time as well. Um, it, it, again, it shows what the attorney is spending majority of their time on, uh, what they have billed. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a very powerful tool, and it's amazing the, the data that can be extracted um, in those reports. Um, and also how they're customizable. Right out of the box, like I said, you're good to go. But once you learn perfect law, you're able to get in there and customize reports, save those queries, and a couple of clicks, uh, you have the data that you need. Um, so, AIM reporting is definitely a, a huge part of the product, something that we use nonstop and uh, that's about all I have on reporting. <laughs> it also gives the firm, a, I guess, total control of what is going on. It also goes back to what Susie had said about uh, the audit logs, um, because the audit logs you can view in almost every report as well as to what has happened, if somebody may have changed something, or like I said, deleted something. A few clicks, you can run a report and get that information and data. Uh, so we know exactly what's going on. Um, 
So that is what I have on reporting for front office right now. Anybody have any questions, thoughts, comments? Yeah. Anybody have any any questions? Um, I know what what, what I'll be doing for for the folks that are in this session. Um, some folks have this in their sample reports book. Some don't. I'm going to be emailing um, everyone that attends along with the with Roger's session. There's an individual uh, presentation that we're using to show everybody what he's talking about. But I will be sending you a copy of the chapter one or the case management reports that come with the system out of the box. So that that way, uh, if you want to apply this on a daily basis at your at your firm or you just would like to have an understanding of what's available to you, these are the reports that every perfect law user, regardless of what your practice area is, they have just as a part of the, the basic system. So everyone will get those um, here shortly. I'm going to try to email out. I'm playing catch up, so you have to excuse me. I'm running. I'm, I'm wearing many hats right now. Um, but Roger, we, we definitely appreciate you taking some time. I know you and I talked about some some of the things from your um, from your um, conversion. Yes. But, we definitely appreciate you passing that along. Now, I do see that you had a question Val just sent over. I may have. I don't. Can you see the question, Roger? You mentioned the uh, approval of the conflict reports. How are, they, are you determining the person who approves? Uh, so we do those through through matter notes. Um, I I create. Well, it, it, it's it's in the whole setup process of of, of perfect law. Um, in the matter knows on the admin side, I create um, certain nodes for conflict, and then when a conflict check is run, a copy of that uh, the note is put in AIM. A copy of the note along with the conflict is sent to the attorney, which is then tracked in the audit log when I run a report um, for case detail or, or case transactions. Okay, great. So you just gave somebody probably a lot of people have questions like this and things they would like to do. And, um, you know, and, and what ends up happening is, is they kind of, um, you know. They and kinda... Also, it goes back to the security that I mentioned earlier, Anthony, like with case notes, especially related to conflict check, I will certainly put a security, I put my initials on security, so so nobody can go in there and mess with that particular note. They can view it, but they're not able to make changes to it. I don't want someone down the road or something where to happen say, well, you, you never gave me a conflict report. No, here here's the audit trail. <laughs> and it's locked down, so it cannot be changed, altered, or deleted. So, um, And that's something, too, that, that we do when, you know, if you get a, a, an amended petition or a third party petition where parties are added, uh, this will go into, uh, I think what Chris is about to talk to is rules, uh, but we have a rule of rule where the staff will run to update conflict check. Operates on my calendar. Uh, I go to the appointments, run that new conflict or the updated conflict rule. Um, Boom, it spits out an updated conflict report, puts it in the case, I create the note, it goes to the attorney. Again, it's all there, secure, locked down, and the audit trail is there via AIM reports. Okay. Now, I did see uh, someone had a question. Or we have some folks that are asking about some areas as it relates to the conflict process and things of that nature. And uh, what we hope to do is, is circle back to some of the some of the things that you know some of the clients are asking about. Um, I'll get with Debbie and a couple of the training staff and see if we can put together some good information, um, kind of some general stuff that you can take into consideration and actually get some um, better you know some better processes. I do know that we have the uh, matter intake rule that everybody mm -hmm. gets that kind of when you buy the system. And that's a, it's just a template that you can adjust as needed. And you can kind of have things executed from a, from an intake process and from a conflict process um, to fit what you're looking to do. Keep in mind that the conflict report in perfect is a report. I know a lot of systems, I get a lot of phone calls 
in sales where people want to get a conflict system versus the fact that in perfect law you have a full report that's just it's just a matter of setting some stuff up so we will get you some good answers on that um and, and, and also anthony the conflict report is accessible from so many different parts of the system i mean you can do it within that specific matter or you can do it from uh the main aim navigation channel to hit the conflicts um so that's one good thing about conflict is it's always available in all parts of AIM and uh, the report writing process. Right. Well, we definitely appreciate you taking some time, Roger, and sharing some things with us. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm sitting, I, I just have that just to remind folks that you will be getting a copy of the case management reports that Roger's been talking about so that you have them. Now, um, we're going into the 11 o'clock hour. Um, you know, if, if folks want to take just a few moments, maybe bathroom break, um, you know, allow yourself to kind of catch up. I know we went pretty quickly through the first two presenters, and actually we're a little ahead of schedule for once. I thought we were going to be behind, but we're, we're running great. Um, the next speaker is going to be Chris Vickers, who is uh, a long story with Perfect All, but an awesome one. Um, and we're, we're definitely looking forward to her spending some time with us and actually talking to us on a few things and sharing with us. And then uh, in this 11 o'clock hour, we also have a very special guest that we're going to hold to the vest until it's his time to speak. Um, but we're definitely looking forward to the things that he's going to be talking to us about as well. So, Chris, if you're there, I just want to make sure that your mic is working and everything is working so we can start promptly in the next few minutes. Are you there, Chris? I mean, you there, Chris? I see your mic is on, but we don't hear you. So I'm not sure if it's just a, uh, sometimes a go to meeting, we have a couple of these little glitches where someone may be uh, having some, some technical problems. Her cat says she's here. Yeah, I see that she's here. We we, we can't hear you, Chris. I, I see your mic is unmuted. I'm not sure if it's just an audio problem on your side. Anthony. Yeah, I'm here. What I, yeah, Anthony, it's Mark. What I would, Chris, if you can hear me, I would, if you go over to the uh, audio, there's a phone number. If anything, you can dial into the phone number if your computer speaker may, or uh, your microphone may not be working. Yes. <laughs> Is that where we taking a quick break, Anthony, and come back? Yeah, yeah we're taking a break. I'm gonna. Uh, we, we're gonna start as soon as Chris can get connected. We're gonna be ready to go because I wanted to give folks a few minutes. We're running a little ahead, ahead of schedule, so this way, okay. people run to the bathroom, do some things, and then when Chris is ready to go, we can pick up and get going. Thank you. You, you have any luck, Chris? Okay, hold on. We're gonna we're checking on Chris and seeing what um, I'm trying to see here. Hello. 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 Chris? 
Okay. You're there. We hear you. We, we have your feedback now. I, think you may, I don't know if you have it in places. You may want to mute your um, computer if you're on your phone. What's causing the echo? Yeah, uh, is your mic on on your computer? What about now? How's that? I shut it off in the app. Yeah. If you want, Chris, uh, we have you on the phone. So if you want to restart and just get started and we'll, you know, and we'll start your session. And we can go back from there. But we're getting some feedback. I think it's from the computer. Is that better? That's better. It's, it's the feedback from your phone. Can you hear me from over there? So we're just getting feedback. It's better now. Thank you. Oh, I got it. I think I got it. How's that? That's it. Better? That's it. Goodness gracious, so many settings. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry about that. All right, Chris. Uh, my name's Christine Thicker. Are you ready? Okay. Um, I've worked at Wiener McCollis for 35 years. Uh, we were a small insurance defense firm when I started with one office in Chicago and about 10 attorneys. We now have four offices in the Midwest with 69 attorneys. The beauty of Perfect Law is that it has been able to allow us to grow, not just internally, but externally, and maintain our systems and data in one centralized place. So. With that, we're able to monitor our office, other office activities real time, which is a good thing. Uh, so I'm going to speak to you this morning about the calendar, appointments, tasks, and to-dos. One of our issues when we went to Perfect Law was very similar to what Susie referred to earlier. We had our, our docket in Illinois has not just 20 cases up at one time, but thousands. Our workers' comp docket literally is pages of cases, every firm, and we needed to be able to pull our cases out of those thousands of cases up in the state to monitor their activity and attend required appearances. So every program we looked at was not able to do that at all, simultaneously diary say, you know, 100 cases at the same time on the same day. Perfect Law was the first one to say they could do this. So that was, a, that was a selling point for us as well as many, many other points that have been referred to here today. We've had the program since 1999. So we create a rule for each arbitrator to do a full year of status calls instead of one little appointment at a time that keeps everything nice and tidy, connected together. That's the beauty of a rule. It also allows us to bill the appointment upon completion as earlier spoken about. So the system is first designed to help law firms capture time, not lose time. We probably increased our time intake the first year 10%, which was huge. Um, we use the rules not just for court procedural processes such as, you know, standardized civil procedures and practice. We use them for standard rules for uh, answers, interrogatories, um, plead other pleadings that have a deadline and a, or a subsequent deadline. We keep we create the rule connecting the base appointment with the act the subsequent appointments necessary under the statute. We use appointment rules for the court calls, 
we use the appointment rule process for our client reporting requirements. I don't know how many of you have insurance defense firms that you deal with, but our clients are very particular about reporting. So, you know, the biggest complaint lawyers have had over the years is communication. So this helps us not just report to the clients based on their guidelines, but also keeps us as a, as a good service model for our, our clients in general. So with that, I'm saying if you don't have insurance clients that have reporting rules, it would be a good tool to use for just general clients so your attorneys have a service model that meets communication requirements in our industry. That this the screen is showing you the rule outline, and that's that's how I refer to it because it is like an outline. You have your first appointment, and then based on the rule requirements, you have you build your subsequent or follow up appointments based on the first appointment. You can subtract days from the the subsequent rule or the previous rule. To with the description, or you can add days on to the initial base date for follow-up appointments. We use this. We use a rule all the time, and I find it. Um, it's been a. It's made our lives easier. Like for example, the court rules we have for the arbitrators in Illinois. They keep changing them, but let's say a matter is up every two months. Well, we create a rule for that arbitrator based on the court's calendar for the whole year. So initially, the time required to create the appointment might be a, a little, little bit of time. It doesn't take a lot of time, but you have to make sure that your rules are in place correctly. It's worth the effort up front because you never have to make another appointment for the rest of the year for the court calendar. We have thousands of cases up every day throughout the state, not just Illinois, but Missouri, Indiana, and Kansas. The rules also sync obviously like any appointment would to the attorney's calendar. If the means there's something else you want me to touch on, I mean, I could talk about perfect law the rest of the day. Sure, go ahead. We, um, we, you know, we, you it's, it's not just rules, it's, it's the all-in-one program. We, we had issues years ago with our contacts, our conflict of interest. Nothing was centralized. It was back in the old days with DOS billing programs that would run out of record space. We'd have to pur really purge records and never know if a file existed again. Everything was on Rolodex cards. Um, when we went to Perfect Law, we consolidated all those issues and streamlined a lot of processes. I mean, Hi, even our Albert. our document were, as Susie explained, they would bring up a, an old existing document that had old information or incorrect information. That was an issue. The merge, the contact database and the merge got rid of that issue. <laughs> uh, we just have a couple, have a few people in the background, but... So anything else you'd like to add, Chris? Well, we've been using it a really a 20 years practically, so no no regret, only positive feedback. Our firm loves it. The staff loves it. Um, with the COVID crisis, we were easily able to let everybody work from home. There was we didn't have to do any extra setup. 
And it was be- just the next best thing to just sitting in your desk in Chicago. Our billing, we changed a little bit. Um, the lawyers never wanted to let go of the paper pre-bills, but they had to with COVID. And now we just create PDF files for their review with a link, like a hyperlink. And have taught them, you know, they're so intimidated by change, but taught them how to use comments to edit their pre-bills, which honestly for the biller has been a godsend because, you know, as you know, when you use those, you can see how many changes there are at the front and just skip to the next change. I mean, fishing through paper and wasting paper has been completely minimized. It's been nothing but good experiences. I've, I've taken away some notes here today from things other speakers have said that, you know, I don't know everything, but it's wonderful to have the collaboration because usually when we collaborate, it's always, it, it gives me another view of a way I can do something in the office that make everyone's life more simplified and easier to, easeability of their day and productivity increase. So. I thank you, and if there's any questions, let me know. Yes. Well, thank you, Chris. I mean, for a lot of folks who may not know, um, Chris is, we go back a long way. You know, Chris is probably one of the foundation folks that help us grow in Chicago, Um, and she's done a, a great job of helping other perfect law firms um, make some strides and you know, they, we have a active user group in the Chicago area where uh, a lot of firms are helping each other. And it's something that we, we, you know, we're working on duplicating in other areas because we honestly see the, the power of not more so what the problems are, but when people say, hey, I'd like to do this, but at the end of the day, um, I don't know how, or, you know, I, it's going to be a lot to take on, a lot of change, and some people are They shy away from what it takes to get the job done, but Chris has done a great job of helping other firms, not just in Chicago, but in other places, and giving them good advice and helping them grow the way they like to grow. So we really thank you for that time, Chris, and I know that the calendar part, there's a lot of stuff that people could get into. Um, You know, we did a time study, the last screen before this this current screen, uh, we did a time study last year. We actually did a webinar on it where we counted the number of ways you can actually initiate time entry in perfect law and at our count we were at 16 so you know a firm that takes advantage of the full capabilities of perfect law will have a huge 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 return so now um, our little surprise guest is a firm here in miami florida in our home in our home in our backyard they've been with us for over 30 years Um, when you take a firm like this and watch them grow as long as you've been around you have a very special relationship and at first you know when i started putting this together some months back wasn't sure if we were going to be able to get him to spend some time with us because you know big firms have busy schedules um but we have the it director from kabiki draper who uh, as we go through the tabs have done some hugely impressive things here uh, in florida but as a law firm, they've done some hugely impressive things. They've made us better as a company. Um, I get a lot of calls with a lot of firms that, oh, you know, can you guys support a big firm? Um, and the truth of the matter is, is he's evidence that we can not only support a big firm, but we can actually bring something to the table that makes them even better. Um, so I don't want to take up any time that belongs to Eric, so I'm going to just turn this over to Eric. His name is Eric Gonzalez. Eric, if you're there, unmute yourself. We'd love to be able to hear what you have to to share with us. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, My name is Eric Gonzalez, and I'm the IT director for Kubicki Draper. Uh, For those those of you who were expecting a celebrity, uh, for the surprise speaker, I'm sorry to, uh, you know, not fulfill that. So, (laughs) but... um, uh, basically, what I want to do is to bring to the table the perspective from IT, not from a paralegal or attorneys, but mainly from an IT director. Um, when Anthony asked me a few weeks back if I can join, I, I think maybe the reason why he wanted me to participate is because we have been a, a perfect little client for over 35 years. and. Um, 
probably I can bring a couple of tips on how to uh, deal with uh, John Duncan. Just kidding. Uh, but basically, the reason I bring John is uh, to bring me to my first uh, bullet point that I have. Um, slightly different from what uh, Anthony has on his uh, PowerPoint. But, um, but basically, uh, the main reason I, I bring uh, John Duncan is because, uh, number one, he's, he's a super, super sharp, uh, smart person that, that I, one of the smartest person I've known. Uh, he's a workaholic. And the main reason uh, I bring him up is because to talk about our relationship and the service history for over the past uh, 30 years. So I started with Kubiki Draper after Hurricane Andrew. That was 1992. Uh, I was still I was still going to college, and uh, uh, for accounting that was my major. So I started working for for Kubiki, and um, as a as as a bookkeeper basically at the time. And during that time, I was uh, Perfect Law was doing not only Perfect Law uh, software, but they were also doing uh, computer networking, which was my hobby basically. So I was able to fix a lot of the problems uh, with Kubiki uh, network at the time without having to call Perfect Law. So the first time I met John was through a letter that he wrote to Gene Kubiki, uh, basically complaining about me uh, for, for messing around with the network. Uh, but, you know, it's like a marriage. Basically, uh, we have been working together for 30 years and and, and just like a marriage, I guess you want to partner with someone who's going to be there for you, who's going to be able to grow with you. Uh, so that's what John and Perfect Law has done. Uh, I can tell you that probably 90% of the people that were working for Perfect Law in 1992, they're still there with Perfect Law. So that, that brings a lot of to the table. Um, there's a lot of knowledge there, and there's, um, there's been a great support. Uh, you know, so that's that's the main thing. Uh, they've been able to keep up with the firm growth. We, when we started with the firm, uh, was we had probably about not even 50 employees, two offices, and uh, Gene Kubicki came to my office one day and said, "I I would like to open the West Palm Beach office," and I said, "Sure, you know, we'll do what every IT person used to do at the time." Let's set up a, a server at the West Palm Beach office with the database, with a backup, uh, you know, solution and so forth. And every office, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach used to work independently uh, with the cases. But a year later, he stopped by my office again and said, you know what, I would like to offer, open an office in Tampa. And then I told him, well, let me, let me, give me a week so I can think about this design. And then a week later, he came back and said, by the way, I want to op also open an office in Jacksonville. <laughs> and, and I said, well, thank God for Perfect Law. What we did is we consolidated everything into one database. I changed the whole network uh, design. So everything worked from one office. Everyone was able to collaborate. And uh, since then, that's kind of like the thin client mentality that I implemented that allow the firm to grow to over 500 users now, and we have 12 offices. Um, so that's the history with Perfect Low. Their service has been great. Um, and, and that's one of the key factors for working with Perfect Low. The second item is how Perfect Low has helped us uh, with requests from our clients and keep up with the industry changes in a timely fashion. So, for example, the, um, I'm just going to name a couple of uh, projects that I work with them and collaborated with. Uh, not too long ago, electronic uh, clients have started requesting that we build them electronically. So at the time, you know, I looked at all the other, I, I know all the players in, in the industry. So none of them had, at the time, an electronic build format solution. So I just called Perfect Law and they said, sure, and they created that. So that helped us with our client relationship. 
uh, we were able to retain more clients and gain more clients because we were able to do what they wanted in a timely fashion. Uh, when uh, the industry changed and they said, okay, we need to now e-service all the documents. No one had that implemented. I remember that you had to change from WordPerfect or Word uh, to PDF. And trying to explain that to a law firm on how to convert PDF and reduce it and so forth and make it read only or searchable, uh, it was a challenge. And then you had to produce an email that contained all that information like the claim number and so forth. So what Perfect Law did, they created an icon. We worked together on this uh, behind the scene on the technical side of it, that by you selecting a document on the document link and clicking that icon, it will generate an email and it would attach that document in a PDF format already. So for rolling this project out to the entire firm, it was very easy. And we got that done within a week. Uh, our competitors and friends of mine that are in the IT business as well, uh, they were just waiting for the next software release from the from their vendor. So that's something that you know we benefited from by doing that. Uh, some of you may say, "Well, you know, but Perfect Global will send you a bill for that." Sure, but I'd rather get a bill for five thousand dollars or whatever the case may be for custom programming not than not able to have that advantage or that ability to even produce it. So um, at least I, I have that option. So that's what you get with Perfect Load. Uh, you have the ability to do something custom if you need to. Um, so again, a few years ago, the firm wanted to become 100% paperless. We reach out to Perfect Low and fine tune a few things that we had um, that were paper intensive. They implemented barcode scanning. They added vendor invoices. They added uh, paperless billing. So you don't have to print uh, the PDF uh, for the pre-bills or any of that or make notation inside Adobe. So we, we did a lot of those uh, projects with them. And and I can go on and on, you know, case management screens. Uh, uh, one of our clients, uh, State Farm, required that we produce metrics and reporting. Like, again, we, we did that. Um, so between the service level, the, the history of and reliability for, for, for John uh, and all their engineers uh, being at, at perfect low for such a long time and uh, being able to do all the challenges that, that we get as a customer, as their client, uh, has been great. Uh, obviously, I've looked at different solutions through the 30 years that have been working at Kubiki. We had different controllers, different office of administrators, and so forth. And, and we obviously looked at different solutions and, and compared. But the the second biggest benefit of having Perfect Law, as many of you have mentioned before, is the all-in-one solution. But I'm going to tell you what that means from, from my perspective. Uh, number one is easier support. Uh, keep in mind that for many, many years, I run the entire firm by myself. And even now, when I have 500 and plus users, there's only three of us in the department. Um, so it was important for me to deal with one vendor and not having to deal with the issue of pointing fingers. You know, if, if you have a problem with time entry, they're going to say, well, you know, it was your data replication that happened last night that didn't import all the matter numbers, or it was, uh, you know, your document management system or your, you know, so forth. So having one vendor, it simplified the process. That's one. Uh, there's no data replication. There's no delays. The data is there. It's all synchronized front and back office. So that's one key, so key benefit of having back office. I mean, all in one. The second thing is centralized management. And what that means, again, I was, at the time, I was the only person working at the office with over five locations and I couldn't be in all locations at once. So having a centralized management design, that was very helpful for me to run the whole operation. And, you know, the, the main advantage is years ago when we linked all the office together, bandwidth was not what we have now. So 
it was very crucial that we had an application that was thin that didn't take up a lot of resources or bandwidth for us to connect all the offices. And uh, you may say now it's not that critical because you know we can get a gigabit internet at the office. Well, it came in helpful again when COVID uh, hit because we had to send over 500 employees home one day and uh, their home internet were not the best and they were able to function perfectly fine. So having a thin client is, is very important, um, you know, from the IT perspective, you're gonna save a lot of money on, on servers uh, to run everything. Um, so that's, that's basically the, the main three things that I wanna point out about perfect low applications and service. Number one, the relationship, reliability, the ease of the product with not having to deal with multiple vendors and the ability for them to adapt to your needs as quickly as possible. Um, the last point that I want to make is, as many of you have mentioned, there are a couple of features that our users uh, overlook. And uh, this one is one that I collaborated with Perfectlo after I was looking at one of their competitors, actually. And I got the idea about having virtual folders and they went ahead and reviewed that and made something very similar, actually better than the competitor by creating this virtual ser virtual folders in under the document links tab. Uh, we also created profile folders that allows you to uh, dump a Dropbox file or CD into the folder within the document link folder. And uh, another feature that many of you have uh, mentioned today was document assembly. This is one of the most overlooked feature because many of of those working uh, the firm, what they do is they pull a document from 10 years ago, they copy and paste and they save it as a new document. Well, from the technical side, that's the problem because sometimes they hit save, not save as, and they replace the document, so we have to restore that. But also, when you're producing documents, number one, it it's, may not use the same format across the firm. It may have in, incorrect information on it because the contact is already has the old address. So pushing for document assembly is is very important feature to, to do at the firm because many are still trying to uh, take focus by copying and pasting old documents. And uh, the bulk profiling email, which I call the email profiler, that's another feature that is also overlooked. Uh, sure, you can drag and drop an email to the document links and profile it. You can just click a shortcut and an Outlook and profile it. But uh, the problem is many of the attorneys fail to do that. And the problem is uh, they don't like to delete anything from the Outlook. But if they do leave, then you have all this client matter related correspondence in Outlook that is gone because most likely you're not going to keep the Terminator employees Outlook forever. So it is important to use that email profiler that works very easy. All it does is if you put in the matter number in a specific uh, format and the subject line, as you send or receive emails, all those emails are gonna get profiled into the matter number. So at least you're gonna be able to easily capture that without even doing any manual process. And uh, the last, and I think that's the most important feature that many are not taking advantage of is the data browser, which is the, the search feature. Uh, you can search uh, in perfect low pretty much anything you would like to. It, it could, you can search documents, appointments, time entry, metrics. Um, once you get the results, you can customize the columns, you can export into Excel, you can filter the results. So basically you're able to find anything you would like to. And what I've done for the firm in every single category, I created samples so that they're saved and anyone who looks at that can see, oh, this is a way for me to search for a court case number uh, that has a claim number starting with five, nine, blah, 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 that for this year. And, and that's what I've done for the firm to help uh, encourage uh, the data browser use. But um, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, it's, um, 
I've been using Perfect Love for over 30 years, and I've helped many in the industry as well that are not using Perfect Love. So I, I know the difference, and I know the pros and cons. But overall, this is this is one of the key applications that has helped us grow and expand our firm without having any technical issues. And I can tell you that many companies out there are not going to keep the same employees for a long time as what Perfect Law has. Uh, many of the companies have been bought out by others. Uh, Orion uh, Client Profiles, CP, which we had, um, you can I can name 20 of them. They, they have all been bought out by other companies. And uh, so far, you know, we still have Perfect Law and they're, they have been reliable and continue to support us. So, um, like I said, it's we have nothing but good things to talk about Perfect Law and it's been a key key application for our su success. So, you know, if you have any questions, you can use the chat box. Uh, my email is eg at .com. If you think about something later on that I, that I can help. Uh, my background is more, more on the networking side of it, but uh, I, I do deal with Perfect Glow directly with projects and implementation, and not so much on the daily process of time entry, for example. But um, that's it, Anthony. Uh, I don't know if you have anything specific for me, but uh, that's pretty much what I have on my agenda. No, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. I mean, you know, um, having someone like you come into the chat and, you know, spend some time with us for all perfect law uses, I think it's a huge thing because a lot of times people have different questions as it relates to growth, as it relates to just things that, that in a day to day firm atmosphere that they, they're not sure of. And to have someone who's had to do it for as long as, you know, Kabiki Draper has had to do it under the circumstances that you've had to do it, um, hearing from you is, is great. That's one of the main reasons I wanted you to be a part of this is, um, you know, it's one thing to give somebody a name on a reference sheet. It's another thing to hear from them directly and, and let you tell your story because we can't tell your story the way you can. So we, we definitely appreciate you spending some time with us. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. So if I can just get Miss. Valerie Williams, and Mike Burks, who's on, he's on the phone with us to kind of step into the conversation. Um, what I wanted to do was, you know, I wanted to have an event that was a little bit different than most of the events that you get from Perfect Law. Typically, people are logging in, they're seeing, you know, some new feature, oh, you're selling us something new, or, you know, we, we have a little something, but, you know, it's always about buy or it's always about an announcement. And so this event was centered around the idea that we can get our users to help each other. And you have people who move on in life. They retire, they take on new jobs, they do a lot of different things. And you want to make sure that people understand the impact of perfect law in their career. And even in, in the process of moving on, sometimes they reach back. And uh, Val and Mike both have uh, moved on in life. Um, Val more so than Mike is because hers is probably more recent has always made herself available to people when they've asked questions or when they want to know things. So I thought what we would do is have them who they've been listening in. They've heard what the speakers have to say, um, but have them kind of give some insight from their perspective about things to remind a lot of the folks that are on the call now um, why you should truly appreciate perfect law and what it has to offer and maybe even offer the opportunity for you to learn a little bit from them as well because they both have worn many hats um you know just flashing up val's history you know, val and i met on a call back in 2004 and she had, you know at some point became a perfect law client they were converting from elite they were using multiple systems um and we ended up being the product of choice and Val is probably one of the most astute, smartest people I've met and truly embrace what Perfect Law has to offer. She is also, you know, all of us have had to endure the strain of COVID and what it meant for us from a business standpoint. Um, 
when COVID hit and everybody was scrambling to move into working remotely, um, Penn and Cal was already on their way to working um, remote, but they were already on their way to our cloud. So at a time when we thought, well, maybe they will actually take a step back. No, they ramped it up. They went live right at the beginning when, when, when everything went crazy for everybody. And they've been one of our best cloud users since. So, you know, she has that experience of how do I get a firm of our size, which was about at the time, I think uh, somewhere around 100 users, maybe a little more, working in the cloud as fastly, as quickly as other folks were doing, but also moving into the cloud uh, as a permanent solution, and, and she was able to do that. Mike Burks is someone, uh, I've known Mike. Mike was uh, uh, a person who, uh, when we met, he was working with one of our primary competitors out of the Atlanta area. He was looking for some solutions. Um, awesome person who knows a lot about law firms. Uh, Gamble & Stokes became one of our, our best firms in Atlanta. And unfortunately, over time, they were purchased by Baker Donaldson, who was one of the largest firms in the Southeast. So he went from working in a firm that was about 50 to 60 users to being a member of a firm that was about 2,000 users. And um, during his time with us, he actually, um, you know, there were ideas, there were things, there were things about us that he really liked, and there's some things he brought to the table for us that made us better. So we've always appreciated him. And then unfortunately, when, after being purchased by Baker Donaldson, um, Mike and I would keep in touch. Um, Truth be told, Mike had a little version of Perfect Law he ran um, because he was shutting down the firm. And one of our little inside jokes is, you know, he would always talk about that, you know, Eric from Kabiki, he mentioned that he's got a, firm, a, a group of three people running 500 users. And I think, you know, and I have Mike expand on that. I think Mike had, their IT department was like in the 30s um, for 2,000 users. So even if you scale it up, you're talking uh, IT department that's a third of the size of what uh, Baker Donaldson had that could run Perfect Law under the same umbrella. So he has a very unique view of Perfect Law. After you know what you're seeing on the screen is he did. Uh, there was a Q and A sent by a user wanted to understand, you know, and looking at Perfect Law compared to what his experience was, you know, what they thought, and it was actually a pretty well thought out review, which I'll be sending to you uh, at the end of the day. Well, he went through point by point and gave some very great points as to what, you know, why you would want to use perfect law. So uh, with that said, Mike, are you there? I am here. Okay, Val, you there? I'm here. Okay, so um, since Mike is, uh, Val, Mike is on, on the road, he's on the phone. I'm going to give him a little respect here for being on the phone. Go so I'm for start, it. Don't mind. Mike, um, kind of give us, you know, your your thoughts on Perfect Law uh, from your experience, from where you were to where, you know, where you were before you retired. What's your thoughts on, on us as a company and what we were able to do for you in your time knowing us? Well, I can tell you probably one of the best things uh, that was said would be merged with Baker. I was showing um, some people what we had with Perfect Law. And their comment, they said, you're going to miss that. And they weren't exactly right, because in order to do anything in the big firm, it is multiple, multiple steps. And where, you know, everybody has talked about how everything is all in one. We have, we have CMS, and it's like the, the Apple advertisements. You know, there's an app for that. Well, you want to have a comparison of documents. There's a program, there's a software for that. Uh, if you want to have a scan, you want to do that. There's a program for that. The automatic filing system that Eric was talking about, there's a program for that. So you've got all these fingers trying to tie in to uh, one system. And you can imagine how complex it is. And the firm actually came down and spent time with developers, and they created, they tried to uh, imitate out of uh, SharePoint, Perfect Law, that interface to have a whole matter management system. And uh, it, it worked, but it was very clunky. And I can tell you that 
perfect wall. It's easy to use. It does what it says it will do. It actually works. A lot of times you see demo databases, and they are that, just demo databases. And again, I was showing people uh, in Memphis, our IT group, how perfect law worked. And they said, this is pretty impressive, but this is just a demo database. So we were tied in via Citrix to Atlanta, and um, it was a real database that we had. Uh, Eric mentioned the fact how we went to different offices. You know, he tied them all into one kind of We uh, purchased a small firm in the domain firm in Lake, Georgia, and I drove down there 90 uh, miles and put a Citrix app on there. They were rocking the boat that afternoon. So it really is a, a great piece of software. It does what it says it does. Uh, an IT guy that we used for years, Gabriel and Stoltz, he actually helped Perfect Law uh, after that time to install software. He and I were talking one day, why do you think that Perfect Law just doesn't sell like hotcakes? He says, I think it's because that people don't believe we can actually do everything it says that it can do. And it does just that. I've heard that from other people today. I'm not getting paid anything to say this, but it, it works. It does it. Uh, and I've had to use Perfect Law to wind down Gamrel and Stoltz, which actually took, I guess, about, probably about 10 years. But I can go in Perfect Law, not having used it in years, and it's very intuitive. and get the information that I want. All the reports that people are talking about that are built in, we had to build all, a lot of that stuff uh, from scratch. We built dashboards, we built that, we used pivot tables with an outside vendor deal. All that stuff was built in, in the perfect form. It's, uh, it truly is amazing. Okay. Well, Mike, thank you for that. Now, Val, um, if you can kind of piggyback on Mike's comments and just kind of, you know, give us your overall view of Perfect Law and, and some things from your experience. Uh, I think that would help a lot of folks here. And uh, I think they'd really love to hear what you have to say. Thanks, Anthony. Um, long story less long, um, we converted from our primary system, which was Elite, and uh, at that time, three other systems, uh, to Perfect Law in 2004. And since then, worked with Perfect Law on various projects through the years. Uh, shortly before COVID, I'd say probably a good year. Um, thankfully, our, our CFO is also very technologically, um, uh, he's, he's very techy. let's just say that. He saw the need for us to move to the cloud. And so just prior to COVID, we started that process and completed it probably two or three weeks in advance of COVID hitting. And I think that the timing was just amazing. Um, I am so excited that we've had this event today because I think it shows you that as many of our speakers have said, there's so much of, of perfect law that we don't use. And just hearing some of the things from Susie and Chris and um, Roger, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's anybody that can't walk away from it today without learning something that they might be able to implement within their own firm. And that makes the time spent on this call all that more important. I also agree with, um, with Eric in that, you know, it is, it's been great to have Perfect Law because of their stability and the all-in-one factor that's involved. I've seen many systems over the years. And all of them do all these wonderful things, and then they don't do the accounting part of it. And you have to go to another source for accounting, and or they don't do the conflicts part. And the finger pointing is removing the finger pointing is a great feature that we have with Perfect Law. I think that more and more of our users are looking for answers to um, solve problems with remote access and things like that. And there are so many features of Perfect Law that can answer those questions for you and give you a solution 
that will meet your needs and those of your firm. So I am I am thrilled that we all have this opportunity to talk today. This has been a great experience for me. I've learned a few things and I used the product for about 18 years. So um, I'll be following up with a few people and I hope some of you will as well. Okay, thank you for that Val. Now Val, um, being that you are you know your firm i know that they they do a lot of different practice areas um what would you say is probably one of the key functions or features in perfect law in your time working with us that ha that really stands out in your in your mind that you say you know this is the one feature perfect law got this right and i couldn't live without it on a day-to-day -day basis from your time working with perfect law i think our reporting was one of the great features um that we had um you know, I know with when we first went into Perfect Law, we actually had Elite as our primary system, but then they also had a database that ran in the background called RBase, which which is older than the hills. I don't think many of you have ever even heard of it. That our accounting staff would also replicate everything we did in in Elite into our base, so the attorneys could get the reports that they wanted because Elite just didn't provide it. And if they did provide it, there was a $10,000 price tag attached to it every time. Um, so the reporting was a huge thing for us. But over the years, being able to do the, um, the time entries, have attorneys edit their own time, um, the, that was huge because we have some attorneys that um, they, they would batch it together a couple of times a year and bill out everything. And um, so it, it was a very time consuming process, but it made the whole product made it easier for our attorneys to um, get the information they needed when they needed it. Um, we had one attorney who had been at the firm since before I arrived. Um, and he finally learned to do his own time entries <laughs> and was shocked at how easy it was because he, um, prior to that, he would dictate it and have his assistant type it all up and then he would edit it from there and she'd go in and retype it. And, you know, he just couldn't believe he had waited all these years to learn how to do time entries. So the reporting was huge for me. And although I left shortly after the implementation of document management, I think that was a great win for all of us. Um, being able to profile documents as you're creating them and, and moving through the system and profile your emails as you're moving through the system. It, um, it was truly a win-win for the firm. And I can't think of, you know, any other feature that we had that was more important than having that document management piece put in before we went into COVID. Okay. Yeah, and what, what she's talking about for a lot of the people um, that do have the system, they say, well, I have document management. What she's talking about, there was a, uh, as we transition to the cloud, we, we you know, you, you learn. And, you know, just like anything in life, you're not going to learn until you try it. We tried to move people into the cloud in some of the traditional settings. And we realized we had to make some changes. So what we did was we literally pulled the, the document management component out of perfect law for our cloud users. And we started developing a standalone document management system that's called WebDMS. And the, the, primarily the cloud users use it um, because of some of the issues you have with connecting to Azure and things of that nature. And it, it, it made it easier and faster for folks compared to our traditional technology. Um, and since then, you know, we've been adding users, quite a few folks have added as they go to the cloud. It's a learning curve for existing perfect law users who use the aim document management to make the transition but you know it, it has most of the functions and features that you find in the aim system um there are some things that are slightly different but a lot of folks they love it once they kind of get the hang of it, especially the attorneys so we do actually have quite a few firms who now are running the web dms product as an out of office alternative for folks who are an on-premises setup and it's primarily the attorneys so that they can do their work but it's faster it doesn't require terminal server 
and it gives them the type of, of freedom and response that they want. You know, they can you can put it on a laptop, you can put it on a Surface tablet, and they can access and work all day long. And and that is a that is growing in our user base. You know, that that single product is going to grow, and as it continues to grow, um, you know, we just keep improving it. We keep making it better. Now, Mike. Um, what advice you know your with your experience in in not just as a as perfect law but as a administrator as someone who was responsible for the financial management of you know working in a very large firm in a particular region what advice could you pass along to some of our administrators here on the phone um just some general advice and then some perfect law specific advice well my administrator days were limited to Gambrill and Solis, uh, mm -hmm. which was you know, six years, I guess, that I was uh, in charge of about eight to ten practice groups that developed our alternative fee program. Uh, but it would fit perfect law, I think. It just helped. It made life a lot easier. Uh, billing the secretaries did all the billing. All the editing and the time entries that used to take forever. Bills were able to get out quicker. Uh, we used to have a person dedicated to doing, entering all the cash receipts. Uh, we were able to let our receptionists do that. And so we were able to save an FTE. Um, I was just I guess that's the, that's the best way to say that we're not, uh, I was a one-man man, I was an uh, IT guy, I was in HR, uh, CFO, the, you know, when everything, when anything broke, I'm sure that's, that's the same for everybody, but uh, it, it just made life a heck of a lot easier for one person once we went to perfect law than before. Okay. Well, um, we are wrapping up. Um, we're actually doing fairly well. I, 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 I'm happy that we were actually ending ahead of the two-hour block of time that we had scheduled for today. Um, I want to thank all the presenters. I mean, I, I know we had some glitches and some things are going on and we had technical things that happened. This is the very first time that we've ever done anything like this here at Perfect Law. Um, just to give everybody on the phone, some people have been clients with us for years and don't know me and quite a few folks are either clients I've worked with in the sales process or at some point in time I've reached out to you or called you for either a referral or something like that. I've been with Perfect Law uh, 19 and a half years. Um, I am proud to say that, you know, I've watched the Perfect Law company transition. I remember my early days as a simple telemarketer calling people just to see if I can get you interested to what I do now for the company. Um, my prior, you know, life prior to that, I worked a lot of different jobs, but I spent nine years in the Air Force, so, you know, I, I had a different background. But when I walk around the office, you see longevity. You see people like Mark Adler, who's been here over 20 years. Um, you look at all the different, uh, the program, the customer relation folks, or the customer engineers who've been here for many years. The original writers of the software. Uh, David Sprentis, who's probably the best in the industry when it comes to doing a conversion. I don't know of anybody that can equal what David does from a conversion standpoint anywhere. Um, I can agree to that. <laughs> been here for, you know, the, the length of the time of the company. Um, the, the new programmers that have come on, um, you know, service folks. Uh, Debbie, who took over the front office training, she has been a lightning rod for our training program. Dustin, who used to do the training and then transition and became more IT. Dustin is, is just phenomenal. Raul, I don't think you can talk about anyone. When you talk about how smart John is, you have to mention how smart Raul is because he makes all this work for everybody. Um, you know, um, you have Tanya, who I think everybody knows, one of the best engineers I can think of when you pick up the phone and call and you have issues and you want to talk to someone, they're there. Um, People in the billing department that you never talk about, Karen and Adelaide. Adelaide's been here just over, around two years. Karen's been here a long time. Um, you know, they make this place work for all of you. And I, I bring that up because a lot of times you never know who's behind the scenes and makes it happen for us all. We are also interdependent 
on a job, a day to day basis, job wise, I can't, I couldn't possibly just leave here and not mention them. You know, Chris Chavez, who helps me out with setting stuff like this up, um, our training team, Josephine, if you guys ever need someone that wants to sit down and you want to learn all the little nuances of docketing and what you can do in perfect law, Josephine is amazing. She does primarily our, our, our IP practice area, which is very complicated. And what we do in IP would blow a lot of people's minds. I mean, insurance defense is probably our largest practice area, but IP is by far the most challenging. And, you know, when you say, oh, I want to learn how to create work processes that we can replicate through rules, and you get at the Josephine, it's like saying, Josephine, do your magic, because she's going to make it happen. Um, our marketing department, Frank and, and Mike, you know, we, we have a, a small marketing department, but we, we have to compete with the big guys out there. And all the bi millions and millions of dollars that people spend to confuse people and make you think, well, perfect law is not that great. And they find a way to make it, make this happen for us. So I bring those people up because they get forgotten in everything that goes on here on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Robin Rigsby, who's been with us more than 10 years, has been basically, you know, the business manager and, and a lot of people's right-hand right hand woman. And I, I just have to acknowledge all of our folks. The neat thing about Perfect Law is, um, as Eric mentioned, um, a lot of companies have gone away. And I think I sit in a very unique seat in this business because everybody who has to call perfect law and say hey you know my product is this or my product is that or it's not around they talk to me so i hear the truth and i tell the truth every time i talk to them about what i know um but with that said to watch us go from a private company to an esop you know all these people are just as much partners in this company as they are employees and that makes us so unique in this business and i think a lot of people don't understand how important that is in today's marketplace so I wanted to take this moment to give a shout out to all those people here who made this work. Again, this is the first time we've ever done this. It is not the last time. For everyone that's still on the phone, if you are a workers' comp firm, a workman's comp firm, on May 11th, we are going to have a workers' comp workshop. It's going to be a one-day workshop. It's going to be a little bit different because we're going to have some of our firms participate. But what we're also going to do is we're going to have a uh, – Debbie – uh, she's going to spend some time and show you guys some things um, for your own knowledge and to help you move forward in the future. This event was recorded. We will always record these events. Um, we're going to break this up into different sessions and send it out to people so that you, if you want to hear what Roger had to say or what Eric had to say, you can just listen to just that. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. Um, because I have to do a, wear a lot of different hats to pull this off, I wasn't able to send out the session PDFs that we have put together. So I'm going to be forwarding everyone all of the support information that I didn't get to you today. Tomorrow we will be doing the back office and tomorrow will be as good or better. Actually, it'll be better than today because I think we worked out some kinks. So I appreciate each and every person that showed up today. We had some people that have already fallen off and that's fine. Um, but we do appreciate you. Uh, again, Roger, Eric, Val, Mike, Chris, Susie, Love you guys. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day and making sure that you pass along something that can help all the other folks um, that were here today. Again, this is not the last time. Our push is to make this happen um, maybe annually. You know, we're talking about so, a lot of different things, but we're going to hold our own feet to the fire and we're going to make this happen. So if you did have a great experience, if you've learned something, you have my email address, ab at perfectlaw.com. Feel free to email me any comments on anything. Um, our goal is to make this better and to make sure that we have the opportunity to continue to pass along good information to the firm. So uh, we ended today, but thank you so much for attending, and I look forward to seeing the folks tomorrow. With that said, have a great day.